This revision video is the third one in a series designed to go alongside the AQA GCSE chemistry topic, Chemical Changes, which is Unit 4. There is an accompanying worksheet if you look in the description below. In this video, we're going to look at the reactions of metals with acids, how we can use them to put metals in order of reactivity, and also how we can write some equations for these reactions. By the end of this video, you should understand how reactions can be used to put metals in order of reactivity and be able to recall a general word equation for the reaction of metals with acids. You should be able to name the salts formed by the reactions of three stronger acids, and by putting those last two things together, you should be able to complete word equations for the reactions of specific metals with acids. Chemistry is all about finding patterns and using them to make predictions about what reactions will and won't happen. If you've been watching the series so far, then you've seen us do reactions of metals with oxygen and with water and use those to build a reactivity series, a list of metals in their order of reactivity. Based on this, we can make predictions about which reactions will or won't happen. Just like the reaction of metals with water, the reaction of metals with acid is an example of a displacement reaction in which a more reactive element, the metal, takes the place of a less reactive element in a compound. So that's the hydrogen in the acid. Metals that are more reactive than hydrogen are able to displace it from acids. So we wouldn't expect elements like copper and silver and gold and platinum, which are found below hydrogen in the reactivity series, to react with an acid. When metals react with acids, Definitely two hydrogen. products are made. The first one is a salt. And although you might immediately think of sodium chloride, the table salt that you put on your fish and chips, that's just one example of the thousands of different chemicals that we call salts. A salt is an ionic compound, which means that it contains some metal and some non-metal. The other product that's made is hydrogen, which is a flammable gas which we can test for by igniting it. Hydrogen burns rapidly with a squeaky pop sound. Like we've done with the other reactions we've looked at so far, we can look at how quickly these reactions happen, how many bubbles are produced, how hot does it get, and we can use those observations to put metals in an order of reactivity. We already know that potassium, sodium and lithium are extremely reactive because they reacted very quickly with water. But we can now put magnesium and calcium just underneath those very reactive metals because magnesium and calcium react quite quickly with acids. Underneath them, we have the rest of these medium reactivity metals, things like iron and zinc and tin, which react more slowly. We might see a few bubbles when they react with acid, but not nearly as many as magnesium and calcium. And finally, we have those jewellery metals, gold, platinum, silver, copper. These metals are less reactive than hydrogen, and so they won't react with acids at all. We can use our observations of the reactions of metals with acids to put them in an order of reactivity. Here I have four test tubes, all containing the same volume of the same concentration of a hydrochloric acid. For three of my metals, I have a piece of ribbon that's about the same size. For iron, I'm fresh out of iron ribbon, so I'm going to have to use some iron filings. When metals react with an acid, they release hydrogen gas and they also make a salt. Because we're using hydrochloric acid, these are all going to make chloride salts. The magnesium is bubbling a lot. The zinc, we can see some small bubbles forming on the surface of the ribbon. The iron also has a few very small bubbles forming, but we're not seeing a huge amount. And the copper isn't doing anything at all. That's because copper is less reactive than hydrogen. Salts are compounds made when a metal or a base reacts with an acid. Their name has two parts, like a first name and a surname. The first name comes from the name of the metal. The surname comes from the name of the acid. When hydrochloric acid reacts with any metal or base, it makes metal chlorides, like tin chloride or iron chloride. When sulfuric acid reacts, it makes sulfates, like this blue copper sulfate here. When nitric acid reacts, it makes metal nitrates, like zinc nitrate. Pause the video and check that you've understood this by writing down the name of the salt that's made by these five reactions. 
Hopefully you've got that sodium will react with hydrochloric acid to make sodium chloride, calcium reacts with nitric acid to make calcium nitrate, magnesium reacts with sulfuric acid to make magnesium sulfate, zinc reacts with hydrochloric acid to make zinc chloride, and iron reacts with nitric acid to make iron nitrate. Now we can practice writing some word equations. We know that a metal will react with an acid to make a salt and hydrogen. You can remember this using the acronym MASH. For instance, when iron reacts with nitric acid, it makes iron nitrate, that's the salt that we practiced naming in the last slide, and hydrogen. Pause the video and see whether you can finish these five word equations. Hopefully you've correctly identified that sodium reacts with sulfuric acid to make sodium sulfate plus hydrogen, calcium reacts with hydrochloric acid to make calcium chloride plus hydrogen, magnesium reacts with nitric acid to make magnesium nitrate plus hydrogen, zinc reacts with sulfuric acid to make zinc sulfate plus hydrogen, and iron reacts with hydrochloric acid to make iron chloride plus hydrogen. If you've downloaded the worksheet, there are now 10 more examples of word equations for you to practice completing. Hopefully that was a useful introduction to this topic. Thank you very much for watching and if you did find it helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCSE Chemistry videos coming soon.